Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, amma bar ahmati fillah. Some of the important aspects in anyone's life is choosing a spouse. And in fact, this goes for the men and the women. Uh, and we know from the hadith on Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qal, qala nabiyu, qala nabi, qala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tunkahu al-mar'atu li arba, li maliha, wali hasbiha, wali jimaliha, wali deeniha, فَذْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرَبَّتْ يَدَاكِ The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Abu Hurairah رضي الله تعالى عنه He said, a woman is married for four things For her wealth, her lineage, her beauty, and her religion So rush uh, you know, take choose a woman for her deed and be safe. You know, be in the best uh, <clears throat> situation. So, choosing a spouse is very important and looking at the religion. As men, we tend to be very, uh, you know, interested in the physical beauty. That is a big importance of attraction for some men. Some men, they find love only in the physical. And however, and likewise for women, uh, that they should do the same. Choose someone who's going to help them in their religion, not just because he's handsome, not just because he's wealthy and gonna take care of you. Because if you have any religion, then you will find that this will be problematic for you more than likely down the road. A man that is irreligious in the beginning of the marriage will probably have very little motivation to become religious. And so therefore you will lose. And how many situations can we think of? And in fact, sometimes for the situation of reverts, uh, some women that they maybe were not Muslim and then they had a Muslim boyfriend who was doing all kind of uh, foul activities however they become Muslim and they marry this man and often more often than not even that doesn't last because he has no she's if she's come to Islam for with any sincere intention then she finds that that man cannot give her what she she wants as far as remaining marriage and, and as far as uh, spiritual guidance <laughs> excuse me so with that being the case Allah, the point that I wanted to speak about was that not only in choosing a spouse but the importance of choosing a spouse that is going to help you if you have children and so really what I wanted to discuss was the importance of the tarbiya, the raising of the children. And the, probably the most important thing I want to emphasize, or two important things I want to emphasize. One is that it's very important with their young children to develop and cultivate them, to educate them by spending time with them. Uh, even a father who's very, very busy, take sometime if he's around to read to the children read 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 i can't emphasize enough that reading to develop the children's mind and incline them towards literature and literacy as they uh, grow throughout their life so spending the time for the children so that requires choosing a good spouse who you think will be of benefit in that respect if you choose a very religious woman, that she's a religious woman in her, uh, you know, in, 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 in seeking knowledge, she's a talibat al-ilm, but maybe she doesn't have much education as far as dunya, 
as far as uh, secular education, but at least she could provide that very important tarbiyah of helping the children to be on istiqamah, to be straight, to to be away from the, the haram and enjoy and be upon halal. And, and the tarbi of manners, that's very, very important. The second aspect, if you have a well-educated spouse, but then they are not very religious, that this has benefits, but it has harms. It has maslaha and it has mafsada. The maslaha is that the child, perhaps the father is good in robotics. He's a computer technician. He is uh, uh, a, a, a software engineer, whatever the case may be, and he has that education and he devotes time. The best of those worlds is when you find a spouse that can offer you uh, positive traits, that the education gives some time for, uh, of course, the spiritual food for their religion, and likewise, time even for perhaps non-religious uh, non education in mathematics and so forth. And you see the difference in children that are developed in this way. And if the children have that tarbiyah, that they also are, are, are have manners, that you teach them manners. And you'll see when they mix with other children, you'll see the difference. So this is just something I wanted to mention uh, about this uh, something which is very, very important, and that is the importance of raising our children, because they are the future. They are going to, if they are righteous, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that when a person dies, that their deeds cease, except for three. And the last one amongst those three was a walad in saliha. Uh, a child, a righteous child that supplicates on their behalf. So that's very important as we want our children to be righteous and we want our children to be of those who supplicate when we are no longer, when we're in need of supplication, when we are no, long, no longer able to supplicate. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself. The Shaitan was sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad.